you people have stayed away from me, many of you, until you are a physical wreck. You can never be made whole. The best we'll be able to do for many of you will be to patch you up. Brinkley is fascinating. So this is this total quack doctor. I guess it was the election of 1930, first of all. And the main thing, Dad was alive at that time, but the main thing I remember was Dr. Brinkley. John R. Brinkley, the great goat gland specialist. His special operation was, it was like the Viagra of its day. He claimed to cure male impotence by inserting uh, goat testicles into humans, <laughs> okay, <laughs> surgically. And, uh, and the uh, American Medical Association was like, you know, this guy's a quack. Uh, we need to shut him down. Now, this is very interesting. Um, this is another relic of populism, and, and not just of populism with the capital P, but the populist sensibility. It's a connection to white's anti-populism in the, early, in, the, in the 1890s. It's the same idea. You've got the yahoos, you know what I mean? The, the, the people who are just sort of attracted to the flashing lights and the, the loud music and that kind of stuff uh, that frankly attracts. Uh, and so this is why white season is so threatening. It's like many a uh, sort of uh, uh, a demagogue has gained power and been laughed at and seen, uh, been seen as a joke until they actually gain power. And then it's like, oh my God, this guy's in power and look at the horrible things he's doing. You know? He will appeal to the hillbilly mind as it has never been lured before. He is irresistible to the moron mind. And I can remember my sisters and I going up to his headquarters and they had some sheet music and it was uh, music. My sister played it out on the piano and we would sing it. He's the man who's the man. He's the man who's the man. He's the man who's known as Dr. Brickley. He's the man who's the man. He's the man who's known as Dr. Brickley. And this doctor was flourishing in Kansas. He had a radio show. He was extremely popular. His radio show, he used to prescribe uh, medicine over the air. It's a, almost a household name. Uh, during the 1920s. And uh, it's mostly, it's I think mostly because of his radio. This man had a serious accident requiring the amputation of one of his legs. But he's up and going. And now I'm wondering what about you? How long are you going to keep going? He is his own PR juggernaut. Creates a uh, radio station in Kansas. Uh, it broadcasts to most of the country. Uh, he's able to lure people uh, to Kansas for his goat gland surgery. You know, you just can't kill a brink of patient. Eventually, of course, the goat glands don't work. Uh, the American Medical Association, the Kansas Board of Healing Arts, the Attorney General of Kansas, and William Allen White vow to drive him out of business. They decided to shut this doctor down, and they were going to go on a campaign against him. And what, what's interesting about it was that these were the two, two voices of professionalism going after this guy who's a complete quack. Now, what is this doctor's response? It's to run for governor. That's how he's going to resist getting shut down. You know, he's going to take it. He's going to be, be like Trump. He's going to take it to the next level, okay? And, uh, and here's what's really interesting. So when he runs for governor, what does he run as? Well, as a populist, and by the way, one of his issues was he was against the theory of evolution. Brinkley gets into the race in 1930 when the country is just entering the Great Depression. People are starting to suffer. So there's a, an opportunity for, uh, for charlatans or for opportunists like Brinkley to make an impact. In Brinkley, he certainly saw someone who's like, you know, the, the, uh, the, the fascists were using modern media to promote a very uh, regressive you know, view of the world. I think he sees Brinkley uh, as a political charlatan. I've crossed the Rubicon. I'm not going to take my Brinkley licking lying down. I enclose an editorial, I'm going to shoot more of them. I think as you say, we have to let this fellow get away with murder because we were afraid of offending his half-witted dupes. I just went into it hog wild and plum loco, which I believe is my best technique. I had the same fun fighting Brinkley that I had fighting the Klan, and it was the same outfit, the organized moron minority. And we shot the old goat's guts full of holes, and there he lies today, belly up. Why used rhetoric that raised that issue about the moron majority? Uh, in other words, people who would vote for somebody more out of emotion than out of intellectual or reasoning. In every age and clime, 
there is a great seething moronic underworld. Its denizens are literate. They can read and write, but they can't think. They live on the level of their emotions and vote their prejudices. Usually they are divided between the two great political parties, but occasionally some man or issue comes along that stirs them and they boil up and hold a Scopes trial in Tennessee or elect a Big Bill Thompson, mayor of Chicago. Brinkley voters flooded white with angry letters. They did not know what moronic meant, but they did know what underworld meant, and they were offended. Many corrected White, calling themselves good Christians. White responded, Dear Brinkley voters, you got me wrong. I didn't mean that you were wicked. I only meant that you were dumb. Three days before the election of governor in 1930, the Kansas Attorney General announced that the rules surrounding write-in candidates for governor had changed. To vote for Brinkley, it would have to specifically be written as J. R. Brinkley. I think he has concerns that the average voter will be sucked in by the siren song, that they are susceptible to anybody who has a message that they want to hear at that moment. But clearly, William Allen White feared, in some ways, democracy, that people will vote for whatever sweet song that they hear coming from a politician. Certainly that was Doc Brinkley. White was stunned to see Brinkley receive more than 180,000 votes, narrowly losing to Harry Woodring, who would later serve as Secretary of War under FDR. It is estimated that as many as 50,000 votes for Dr. Brinkley were not counted because of the Attorney General's new rule. Woodring later acknowledged that if the votes were counted, Brinkley would have won. William Allen White who was uh, an avowed enemy of Doc Brinkley, uh, continues to write editorials about him even after he has moved from Kansas to Texas, where he continues his goat gland uh, surgery. Uh, but more importantly, he, uh, he builds a behemoth radio station, a million watts. Uh, the strongest AM radio station now is 50,000 watts. People used to say that you could hear the radio station in the barbed wire uh, through the fields uh, near Del Rio, Texas. So while pointing with pride to the fact that Kansas escaped the doctor's clutches, we view with alarm for the United States the danger which impends in Texas. If this republic ever totters to its fall, it will be because the moron minority shall sometime, somewhere, somehow, gain a party majority by unscrupulous leadership. Had I read that in the newspaper, I would have immediately gone to the Trump campaign. It was prescient, I think, that William Allen White was warning us that if it's too good to be true, probably is. Trump is, you know, as I, I travel around the country talking about what has happened, it's like, we're all Kansans now. I mean, this, this, this thing that I described out on the, uh, on the high plains, you know, in, in Wichita back in the 1990s and the early 2000s, this is everywhere in America now. This is, I, I go further than that. This is all over the world. Doc Brinkley, he's prosecuted, medical licenses seized, dies penniless uh, in Del Rio, Texas. 